The F1 Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Edge Boost. Edge Boost enables you to double your bet with no interest. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to get started today. Get ready for speed. You just wait, sunshine. You just wait. Get ready for the passion. To whom it may concern you. Get ready for the raw emotion. See, ragazzi! Grazie, grazie, grazie! Dai, forza Ferrari! Get ready for the F1 Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Now, here are your hosts, Rod Via Gomez and Cody Z. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the F1 Gambling Podcast here on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. He's Cody Z. I'm Rod Via Gomez. We are knee deep. Actually, at this point, we're waist deep into uh, an amazing weekend of racing. If you have not already, go check out the NASCAR show. We've covered the Coke 600. We've actually covered the Alsco Uniforms 300, the Xfinity race. We've covered the Indianapolis 500. And now, one of the most prestigious races on the F1 circuit. Of course, we are talking the Monaco Grand Prix from Monte Carlo this weekend. So much fun to be had. Great way to wake up on a Sunday morning. Get yourself some F1 racing. Cody, buddy, we've already, like I said, discussed so many races, but this one I'm super excited to do. Yeah, this is this is the the prestige event, right? This is and this is the one that kicks off the Sunday. You wake up, you get your coffee, however you want to start the day. You flip on the F1 race, <laughs> alcohol. I don't. It, hey, it's Memorial Day weekend, all right? We gotta you get however you want to start. Irish coffee, whatever you want to do. Celebrate in the morning. Wake up, some F1. Then of course it kicks into the Indy 500. Then you flip over, you watch the Coca-Cola 600. Uh, just, again, one of the best days in racing across the entire world, too. That's what's great about it. Not just America. Like, the entire world is coming together on this day. They space everything out perfectly. You got F1 in the morning. It leads into IndyCar. It leads into the NASCAR. Uh, and it's just th- the greatest day in racing. Super pumped up. It's been a fun week already. We've covered a lot of stuff. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to break this one down, of course. Last week, we had F1 Capper on. If you haven't listened to that, you can go back and listen to that still. We kind of talked about, you know, just the season update and kind of talked about some stuff leading into this one, how to look at, at this race a little bit. Uh, I feel like that was a nice prep episode to get us ready to uh, to place these bets. Well, plus, it was a lot of fun, too, because we got to pick his brain about uh, just what he thinks about the season so far, you know, his gambling gang and all that stuff. So, yeah, definitely, that's an evergreen episode. You can go back. I mean, we talked Monaco, but... Uh, most of the conversation is is about this season in general, so you can have some fun. Um, Cody, I will say before we even start this race, Thursday, some clouds. Friday, sunny. Saturday, sunny. Sunday, thunderstorms. Where the, And then, of course, Monday, it's back to partly cloudy. The race day, thunderstorms. What on God's green earth is going on? Yeah, it's looking that way a little bit for the NASCAR race, potentially, too. So... Be interesting. Hopefully, hopefully we don't have to deal with weather too much. Maybe weather will come into play in these bets in a good way. Um, so something to definitely keep an eye on and think about as you go into this race. Um, thunderstorms always interesting, of course, because if there's lightning, uh, I don't think they'll be racing. But if it's just rain, we'll see them out there. So uh, already a very tricky circuit. Already a very tricky race. If you want to introduce rain into that, uh, that could make it even more fun. Well, that's the same as it happened last week, uh, last year, which they had the rain. And 45 minutes later, they got on the track. Unfortunately, they had to end that race in uh, the timer. So there wasn't a, an actual full race. It was it was a timed event. But, man, I'm telling you right now, if we're in for another one of those, I mean, that bunched the field up at the end of the race. And if we're in for thunderstorms again, this could make for a very, very intriguing uh, Monaco race this year. Like you said, it's a very tricky track already. So you want to add uh, wet tires, intermediate tires into that mix. It's just going to be nuts out there. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, but, hey, it makes the racing more exciting sometimes. Uh, keeps things changed up a little bit. 
maybe doesn't make it such a runaway race, which we already talked about. We don't think that this one, we talked about that last week with F1 Capper. This one looking like it probably won't be as much of a runaway as, as a lot of weeks. I think of all the tracks we come to, yes, Max is good here. No surprise. Of course, he's good everywhere. He won a couple of seasons ago. Um, but of anywhere, I think this this won't, this track specifically, this circuit, um, allows it to open up to the field a little bit more, give some other people chances that don't have as good of a chance on a, on a regular week-to-week basis. Yeah, I mean, again, this this street track is a monster. It is absolutely crazy. It, it was first uh, run in 1950. That was the first Grand Prix. There's 78 laps around this thing, if that tells you anything, because that's not normally, it's, it's like a 55, 56 lap race. This is 78 laps around uh, this 3.337 kilometers. So, I mean, again, it's not even uh, as long as the other ones. We're talking 5Ks, right? That three miles, this is not that long at all so of course there's a lot of action crammed into this 3.337 kilometers and uh, and these drivers are going to have their hands full around this track yeah and i mean we've seen it how many times like the smallest mistake costs you so much on the circuit now you got to go around and do it 78 times at full speed with 19 other competitors out there too so opens up a lot of room for just the tiniest mistake to ruin someone's day um, and, and open other things up. So it's uh, it's going to be a good one. It will. I mean, I guess this is what you consider a short track in uh, <laughs> in, in Formula One, right? That's right. Not quite the, the five-eighths mile that we had last week in NASCAR, but uh, the F1 version of a, of a short track. All right. Well, we will continue to talk about it and probably start breaking down some bets when we come back from the break. But we're here to tell you about Edge Boost. Have you signed up for Edge Boost yet? Not. You're missing out. Edge Boost is the world's first bet now, pay later Visa card. Similar to buy now, pay later programs, Edge Boost enables you to double your bet with no interest and pay back the advance over four equal weekly installments. That's right, 0% interest. Simply deposit funds into your account and Edge Boost will match the deposit so you can use twice the funds on any legal sports betting site. Edge is currently offering up to $2,500 in advances yes up to twenty five hundred dollars that you can add to your bankroll go right now to sports podcast.com slash edge to sign up today that's sports podcast.com slash edge must be 21 years or older to use only valid in legal gambling states problem gambling call 1-800-GAMBLER well like we said before we hit it up uh just over two miles is this track uh and it was again a, a 78 lap race. It kind of looks like a slingshot. Uh, if you were to hold the slingshot handle and the, the, you know, slingshot part of it is hanging back. It's not pulled out yet. Right. It's just sort of dangling there in the back. Uh, that's, that's quite what it looks like to me anyways. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm silly, but, uh, that's what I'm going to go with. There are what, uh, 19 turns on this track. There's one DRS zone. That's that's the crazy thing about it. There's only one DRS zone on this entire track. That is how short this thing is, uh, and you will definitely not see. And, and and that's one of the things with Red Bull, right? They're they're fast on the on the uh, DRS, and so that sort of takes that out of their hands as well. Uh, the lap record on this one minute twelve seconds point nine zero nine set by Lewis Hamilton in twenty twenty one. Yes, that is uh, that is it. so. I love this. Hold on, I, what what? Just one other prep thing. I'm sorry. I know I'm going on, but this is funny. I found this hilarious. Uh, on on F1's website, they give you kind of a rundown of the circuit, and they usually tell you when the track was built. So for Monaco, it says when was the track built, right? In twenty in twelve fifteen. That that was when the track was built. It said sort of. That's when Monaco was first established as a colony in Genoa. So uh, yeah, I mean. This track is as, as uh, old as twelve fifteen. It's been around for a hot minute, I'd say. <laughs> Just a second or two. If you're uh, watching on YouTube, which this is on the the NASCAR Gambling Podcast YouTube, we've uh, decided to film this one, throw it up there with it being such a big race. You could watch me uh, turn my head all sorts of different ways, trying to figure out how Rod sees a slingshot here. I'm, <laughs> I'm still not sold, but uh, I'll go. With, I, I really, I don't know. I don't even know what you would, what else you would do. So I. I, uh, yeah, it's like a, almost a miniature or like a skinny version of Florida. Maybe if you turn it the right way, 
I don't know. I'm I'm out on the the track description how it looks this week. I'll I'll ride with the slingshot look. Maybe like a golf club if you turn your head a little bit and uh... that, that's a golf club. After I golf and I'm so pissed <laughs> off, I snap it in half. It probably that's pretty close to how it looks like. Yeah, I, I, we'll go with that. Uh, that is hilarious. Um, all right. Well, it's, it's like the kids one that's got like the really big, like uh, you know, the plastic ones have like the really big head on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. I, yeah. Take, that's exactly it. <laughs> All right, we it's uh, settled. <laughs> settled. That's that's what we're going with. Um, but yeah, again, so uh, really leading up to this this point in the in the race, we've had five races so far, and obviously we talked about it. It's just been back and forth between Perez and Verstappen as far as wins are concerned. Uh, hopefully, this track sort of levels the playing field and gives us an opportunity to see some some decently good racing, and uh, and really that's what we're in for. So, uh, you know what. I, I say we just go ahead and get into some bets, Cody. I, I think we're kind of good. The The news is not necessarily newsy, right? I mean, there's, yeah. it's not a hotbed until after the season, until you start watching the, the documentary. That's when the news comes out. <laughs> That's when That's you get all the deep story. I kind of wish that uh, kind of similar to like IndyCar has done it this year and NASCAR had their show last year. Of course, they don't touch Drive to Survive. I get it. That's the best one. But I kind of wish they would release episodes throughout the season like now would be a good time to release like the first episode and then next week you release the second like give it to us during the season so we can kind of catch up on the storylines keep track as we go i love to sit down and binge watch it during the season or during you know the off season when it comes out don't get me wrong but i'd like to see some more a little behind the scenes as we go along but uh yeah not much for news again we kind of talked about it previewed a little bit last week with f1 capper so i think we pretty much covered everything and uh i got some good bets this week i'm feeling good about these Oh, man, there's again. If you follow the NASCAR gambling podcast, uh, between the three NASCAR races, Indy 500 and this race, we have got a lot of racing action. Five races on the weekend. It's a lot of money we can win, Rob. I agree. All right, well then let's just get to it. Let's start the bets, Cody. What do you got first? Let's do it. First up for me, swing for the fences right out of the gate. I'm going to take Lando Norris top six finish plus 600. It's, uh, you're asking for a little bit, but he finished sixth place here last year. He finished third place in 2021. Um, they didn't come here in 2019, but he had an 11th place in 29 or they didn't come here in 2020 rather due to COVID. Um, but 2019, he finished 11th place in that one. So pretty solid string of, of results. His last two trips here, he's gotten in the top six, been an up and down start to the season for McLaren. I get it. That's why you're getting it at six to one. But on a track where it comes down to the driver, where it comes down to not making mistakes, I think that Lando can be one of those guys. He's proved it already in the past here multiple times. I think he does it again this week. Uh, and Lando for the top six plus six hundred. We're gonna we're gonna start start swinging for the fences right out of the gate. The thing about Lando too is that like when he's good, he's when he's on, he's on, and when he's not, he's really not. And it's just there's feels like there's no in between with him. And it's so frustrating, I'm sure, for McLaren to, to know that, you know, when you've got a good driver like that and he, and he can finish in the top six, like you're, you're counting on that, right? And then he goes out and he just lays a stinker and you're like, well, what? We know that you can do this. Like, yeah. why aren't you doing this? Yeah, and like you look at his results this season, he's got three 17th place finishes. So that doesn't instill a ton of confidence. But in Australia, he had a sixth place finish that would catch this. And he had a ninth place finish at Azerbaijan as well. Um, and so, yeah, like you said, it's just, it's either Ben, he's there or he's not. So maybe you find out early, maybe he's just not there and you don't have to worry about it. You throw that one out the window, but if he does show up, I think he's going to have a live chance to cash this all day long. Um, and at six to one over on Caesars, I will take it. I will too. What's um, that? all right. What's, what's his points finish? I should look that up. Cause I might want to add that actually. Well, Give me one on moment card. here. I'm going to find it. It is. Oh, it's minus 143. Ooh. That's why I went with the top six, I guess. We'll stick with the oh, top man. six. <laughs> <laughs> but that actually helps prove my point even more. Like minus 143 means they're fairly certain he's going to be in the points. If he can get in the points, he only needs to improve a few positions to get in the top six. So that actually makes me feel even better about this bet. So uh, thanks for that, books. <laughs> yeah, it should make you guys feel better about it as well. Um, all right. Well, so we talked about it. There's very few ways to to place place money uh plus money bets on max verstappen and this one i find quite curious uh and this is max verstappen i've got him over charles leclerc 
in free practice one at plus 100 over on bet MGM. I don't know what bet MGM has. And I understand that Shaw has been good on this track. Ferrari's good. This is like his home track too, right? Uh, for the most part, they, t- they talked about it. So like, yeah, he's good on this track, but Max has been laying down ridiculously fast laps in practice this season. And it's not even close. Uh, in fact, Max Verstappen finished over Shaw in free practice one for Bahrain. He did it again in Saudi Arabia. Uh, he did it again. Uh, let's see in Australia where he finished first in the practice. It's hard to top that in Azerbaijan. He finished first as well. The only time that he did not come out of the blocks fighting hard for it was uh, in Miami where he placed sixth or I'm sorry, fourth and Charles Leclerc finished third in that. But of course, I think that was the, the pr- free practice that was shortened uh, by something that happened. Right. I don't think everybody yeah. got it full one in on that one i think there was a big wreck or wreck or something maybe but uh yeah yeah because max didn't get to go back out for another flying lap which i'm yeah. i'm pretty certain that he would have gone out and and killed it on that one so uh again i i know and i understand that that Charles Leclerc is probably going to be uh fast on this track and in fact i do think he's going to be uh fast on this track but i just for free practice one it's a different animal it's not qualifying it's not anything like max and and red bull they want to go out they want to piss on that fire hydrant first. They want to get there and mark their territory so nobody else feels like they can be fast. So that's what they're going to do again, reassert themselves into the conversation here at Monaco. And uh, I think they're going to lay down the fastest lap to start out free practice one. I think they'll win it. And Max at plus 100, you hardly ever get that. Yeah, I like it. And uh, he's, he's been fast here before, had the fastest lap here two seasons ago. I've decided on adding another bet on the Lando box rod. He had the fastest lap here last season, and he is 125 to 1 for the fastest lap this weekend. It's a long shot. I get it. But he did it last year. Why not? Let's let's add that on there. Hashtag DGENs only, 125 to 1. I, I didn't add the podium because it was too, too short of odds, but uh, we'll go the other way and add the fast lap in there. I'll take it. I'll take it. But, uh, yeah, right. to, your, to your point on Max, too, I, I do think that, I mean, any way you can get plus money on him, other than to win the race, maybe because he is to actually plus money in some places to win the race, but we'll we'll get into that when we get there. Um, but yeah, I think that he's proven so far in FP ones this season he can get it done. I agree. Uh, all right, we're gonna step away, and when we come back, we will continue to lay out our bets for the Monaco Grand Prix. But I want to tell you about Shady Rays. I'm excited to tell you about Shady Rays because Shady Rays is teaming up with the SGPN for Shady May. Not only do you get an amazing 50% off offer, but you also get a chance to win $500. Shady Rays has always got you covered from the sun to the slopes with their premium polarized shades, customizable snow goggles, and so much more. Shady Rays have durable frames and extremely clear optics for all of your outdoor adventures. Plus... If you lose them, if you break them, minutes after you buy it, years after you buy it, they told us that they are going to send you a brand new pair, and they won't even ask you how you did it. They won't care if you lost it, if they got stolen, if you stepped on them, if your kid threw them in the river. No one cares. They're just going to send you a brand new pair. Uh, And if you don't love them, which I don't know why, but if that happens, you can exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. No risk when you shop with Shady Rays. That team is always got your back and for our international listeners it's an f1 podcast i'm sure there's a few of them shady rays has got you covered as well with shipping to canada australia new zealand and the uk go to shadyrays.com right now use code sgpn for 50 percent off of two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses and remember may's almost over so make sure you take your receipt to sports podcast.com slash shady for your chance to win the 500 dollars shady may contest So as we continue on, we are giving out, of course, the betting picks for the Monaco Grand Prix in Monte Carlo. Uh, Looking forward to this one. It's the most uh, hoity-toityest of events on the schedule, bringing out all the big guns. But uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be a fun one to watch. Cody, what do you got next? Yes, next up for me, going back to the classified finisher as well. I'm going to take, I'm going to do a couple different ways on this. And you'll have to check with Fox Bet because I don't, know why they have a price this way but whatever so caesars has over 16 and a half classified finishers minus 122 absolutely love that over on fox bet you can get over 17 at plus 220 
I would assume that means you have to get 18. I would assume 17 is a push. Check the rules. But either way, even if it is 18, I like that. I'm going to play both of these uh, ways. And you can get over 17 and a half on Caesars as well. But the price was not quite as good. And let's see, I was trying to find it here real quick. But um, mostly, even if it is over on WinBet, you can get the... Uh, if it does hit 17, you at least have that push option in there then as well. So uh, I think that that helps. I can't find that for some reason, but that's okay. We'll just move on. <laughs> um, to the classified finishers point, last year at this race, so you would think, right, you, you go into this race and you're thinking the tiniest mistakes cost people. There sometimes can be more wrecks and stuff, like takes people out. But you go back, you look at last year, 17 classified finishers, 2021, 18, Again, no race in 2019 or 2020, but in 2019, there was 19 finishers, 19 finishers in 2018. You have to go our classified finishers. You have to go all the way back to 2017 for the last time there was less than 17 classified finishers in this race. There was 15 that day. Um, and then you go through the five races we've had this season. 17 is the lowest classified finishers we've had in any race so far this season. So we're on track so far this season with classified finishers over 16 and a half. And track history here lately has shown that uh, over 17 or over 16 and a half rather would hit 17 or more. Um, so I'm going to take that both ways over on Caesars over 16 and a half at minus 122. And then if you got Fox bet, you can hit the over 17 at plus 220 potential for some double dip there. Uh, and I really like that. I would only caution if the rain comes out. That may kind of hamper this bet a little but bit. It rained last year and there was 17. That's true. That's true. But just and like there's more chaos. the rain, if the rain does cut it shorter, mm. that, that closes the window for guys to not be classified as well. Now, it does introduce the obvious danger factor and, and more prone to get in a wreck, but I think that it kind of balances itself out because if it shortens the race, then that window's even smaller for, the, for there to be less classified finishers. So I think you... I think it can hurt, but it can help at the same time. So I, to me, I don't think I'm going to factor the weather in too much because it can kind of go either way, depending on, on how you look at it. Yeah. I guess the, the Kevin Magnuson crash is still kind of fresh in my mind. That was a, that was a pretty <laughs> vicious uh, spin out from last year in the rain. So, um, but yeah, I mean, again, these guys, they've actually been playing pretty clean lately. I, there hasn't been that many uh, big, big wrecks on, or that taken a lot of cars out. So um, yeah, I mean, I feel like they're just all trying to play nice with each other. Maybe, maybe as the season progresses, they'll start to get a little more testy and this number will <laughs> drop a little bit, but I think we're safe for now with, uh, over 16 and a half. I like it. Yes. And I'm, by the way, that was on Barstool, not Caesars. That's why I couldn't find it. So over 16 and a half minus 122 is on Barstool. Uh, they have over 17 and a half at plus 175. So makes more sense to swing over to Fox bet and grab the over 17 at plus 220. First of all, it's a better price. Second of all, at least gives you the push option if it hits right at 17 instead of not cashing when it's 17 and a half. So I would play both ways and just use both books for that. Again, that's why we say have all these books, have all these different options. You've got, I, I know sometimes it sucks. You've got cash in this one. You've got cash in that one. But if you want to get the best options, this is the way to do it. Um, and, and that can make a big difference if it lands right at 17. Instead of losing the bet, it just pushes. It doesn't matter. Um, but if it goes, obviously goes over, then then you're going to cash. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. So I'm going to pick a uh, qualifying winner. And listen, I understand. I, I get it that Max Verstappen is is basically going to run away with the world and that we should probably just only bet on, on Max Verstappen. Um, but here's the thing. I think that Ferrari's got a pretty decent chance to take the poll. Uh, this this time around, and and it really comes down to Charles Leclerc because Charles Leclerc did sit on the pole for this race last season. And in fact, he almost could have won the race last season were it not for a really pissy pit strategy there uh, at the end that kind of put him behind the Red Bulls. Um, but as far as qualifying, he, uh, Charles Leclerc was the fastest in uh, P1 last year. Here he was the fastest in P2. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Sergio Perez passed him for the fastest, but he was the second fastest in P3. And then he qualified on the pole in 2022. So again, he can get it done around here. 
And I mean, not that I don't think signs could get it done, but I mean, look at that gives you an opportunity to cover on signs. This is at plus 155 for Ferrari to win the uh, the qualifying. And then Red Bull comes in at minus 137. It's not it's not juiced up to the point where I feel like it's it's out of touch. I will give that, I guess, as a hedge. If you really wanted to put something on Red Bull at minus 137, it gives you both Max and Sergio. And we both know that it's basically been them all season long tearing up the, the charts. But um, as far as starting on the pole is concerned, it just, to me, uh, like I said, I, I feel like Charles Leclerc is going to try his very hardest, at the very least, to get uh, to the front and try to break up this Red Bull party. Uh, and in fact, he has one pole. This season, he did start on the pole in Azerbaijan, so it's not completely out of the realm of possibility for him to get it done and to put a real fast lap down in qualifying. So, um, again, he gets up for this track a little bit more than most, and at least to start the race, and at least in qualifying, I give him a little bit of an edge to, to get it done. And like I said, at plus 155, I like the opportunity for that to, to happen because for him to win the pole uh, on, the, on his own, um, where is he at to win the poll? I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I will say too. I, I think that obviously Red Bull has proved like if they get on the front row, that it's lights out. Literally, I mean, it, you're not going to catch them. And so I think these teams have to put more of a focus on trying to start in front of them because they're still likely going to pass you. But at least you've got a chance to be ahead of them and, and hold them off. Maybe they don't get into turn one properly or something, but so I do like the angle of taking somebody besides Red Bull um, and Ferrari. They, you know, they've got speed. It's hit and miss sometimes, but we know they can do it. Yeah, uh, Charles Leclerc to win the pole plus one eighty on Caesars. Uh, so if you wanted to grab some of that action as well and really lock it down, eh. but yeah, I like the plus fifty well, plus one fifty five side because you get Sergio too. Just or uh, not Sergio, you get Carlos signs as well. I knew it was one of those S's, but you get him as well. I was looking at my next bet already. That was a problem. Yeah, you were. <laughs> uh, but you get you get signs as well for the coverage there for just a slightly cheaper price. So I like that. Um, speaking of my next bet, I've gonna, I'm going to take Checo over Max plus 195 over on Barstool Sportsbook. I get it, okay? We know that Max Verstappen is head and shoulders, maybe only head above everyone else right now because Sergio's right there on his... Uh, on his shoulders, for sure. He's been hanging with him this season. We're five races in, right? Max wins, Sergio wins, Max wins, Sergio wins, Max wins. Starting to see a pattern here, Rod. This is where Sergio gets it done. We know how good Checo is on the street road court or the street courses. This is his playground. This is where he is the best at. Um, he won this race last season. He was fourth here in 2021. Very good runs. Um, and then, of course, he's got those wins, but he was second in Bahrain just to Max. He won at Saudi. He was fifth at Australia, won at Azerbaijan, and then he was second again last week at Miami. So he's been hanging right there with Max all season long. These guys are in the same cars. Yes, Max is is, is got the advantage, but at two to one just to beat Max, he's done it already a couple of times. Why couldn't he possibly do it again? Um, and so I think that it's just it's overpriced for as close as they've been all season, as back and forth as it's been. And if Max has an issue in qualifying, if he has to start behind him, he's shown in some time, some of these races, he can't catch Checo. If Checo gets up there and takes off, he can't get to him. And Checo's not just sitting by and letting Max take everything. The two of them are far enough ahead at this point that they don't have, Checo doesn't have to play nice and give everything to Max to keep him ahead of a Ferrari or a Mercedes. Like he's got plenty of cushion. And I think that Checo thinks that he can keep it close between the two of them. Um, and so I think at two to one, you've got to take the chance here. Uh, again, if Max leads every lap and laps the field seven times, nobody's surprised. But there is value in taking him. All he has to do is beat the one guy. That that includes, you know, if he has any problems, if he gets caught up in somebody else's mess, if he gets caught up in his own mess, if there is weather, it creates an issue. There's enough things that could go wrong for Max. And Checo could straight up beat him too. So you've got that as well. A two to one, basically, plus 195. I like that angle. And for Checo, I mean, it's about as close as he can really get. And this is about as close as he's been, right? To being able to be within striking distance of 
Verstappen. And honestly, over the last couple of seasons, this is probably the closest anybody's been really to, to making a noise and making end roads into his, his dominance. So you got to think that on a course like this, just like you said, we, he loves himself some street courses. That's well documented. He loves to be able to run uh, wide open and, and, or, or in certain spots and hug corners. And this just, tr this track lends itself to his type of racing. Max gets a little frustrated sometimes when the car is not exactly right. So again, keep an eye on practice, keep an eye on qualifying. If there's something wrong with this car, you know, he's going to let people know. And, and he gets a little fidgety in that. Now, granted, sometimes that pisses him off and he gets his way to the front and he beats everybody by like 900 seconds. But, you know, on a track like this, you can't really lose your cool. There's a lot of hairpins that can get your ass up there. Yeah, absolutely. And again, one little mistake could cost him. Indeed. Um, all right. I am ready for my edge double down play of the day. I love this one. I'm doubling down on this one. It's Carlos Sainz as a top five finisher over on Barstool. They've got him at plus 110. Look, Carlos Sainz has been quietly just putting in performance after performance. Everybody's talking about Leclerc. Everybody talks about how, you know, Leclerc dominates. And obviously we know Max and Sergio are, are there. Um, but right around them is Carlos Sainz. This season, Carlos Sainz has had three top five finishes a uh, four in five races, by the way, that, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but in five races, he's only finished outside of the top five twice, uh, a sixth place in uh Jeddah. And then another one in Melbourne, a 12th place finish. But outside of that in Bahrain, a fourth place finish. Um, and then in, uh, in Baku, a fifth place finish and in Miami, a fifth place finish. So you notice a pattern. Cody just said, there's a, there's a pattern evolving. Well, there's a pattern here and that's fifth place finishes or better for Carlos Sainz this season. And again, he's putting in the work. He's in that Ferrari equipment. He's even probably had a, he's had a better season than Leclerc, really, as far as consistency is concerned. So for look, uh, for Sainz to get uh, a top five at plus 110, and you don't see very many top five odds out there. That's why with bet, uh, with uh, Barstool, I, I can't believe they actually were offering that. So that's why I snatched that up. On this track in his history, Carlos Sainz has made seven starts. And the last two have been second place finishes uh, in 2021 and 2022, ever since he joined the Ferrari team. Not saying that that's a coincidence, but I'm just saying if, you know, you tell me that he's finished two, uh, two races in second place in, on this track as a difficult track in Ferrari equipment, whereas, and it wasn't that bad even um, in, in the Toro Rosso or the Renault or the McLaren for that matter. He has not finished outside of the top 10 on this track at all. A 10th place finish in his first run, 8th place the next, 6th, 10th, 6th, 2nd, 2nd. He even led three laps in the last year's race uh, before the pit stops uh, got everybody in Ferrari and put him behind Red Bull. But um, yeah, I'm just telling you right now, this one is is about as of a lock as I can give you. That's why it's the edge double down play. Carlos Sainz, top 5, plus 110. I love this one. I love this one so much. I didn't believe that it was actually real. So I had to go look for myself and it is under the special section. So good job catching it over there. Cause I was looking, I'm like, I don't see any top and his top six odds are crazy. So this is like one of those boost plays basically where uh, they're giving them to you at plus money for a top five finish. I, I love this play. I'm going to talk more about signs in a minute. So yeah, fully in on this one. That's great catch on, on seeing that one, Rod. I, I really, really like this. That's why you got to dig, bud. You got to dig deep. Everybody yeah, knows yeah. that. We yep. dig We dig pretty deep. We're trying. Yeah. We're looking everywhere for you. The amount of books I come through on a week-to-week -week basis, it's rough. That's why I'm giving you – that's why I gave you a Fox bet book or bet earlier, right? We don't, we don't go there very often, but, hey, if they're offering you the best line. You got to take it. Yep. I, I yeah, we're 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 clicking every we don't let one undone. We just go and we go and we go. Um, but yeah, so you know what? Hold on. There was one I saw, and maybe I'll get I'll do it while you're I'll look for it while you're giving out your winner. But I, I definitely found one that I wanted to to pass along to um to some of our Canadian friends because this book's only up in Canada. Yes. But I know we've got a few of them. So yes, um, I know what book you're talking about. I don't remember the name, but uh <laughs> Did I did I send it to you? I think I might have sent it. To you. I well, is if it's the one that JDK was talking about in our Discord. Oh no 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 no! This uh, is no. Okay. Well, that yeah. one looks good too. That's only available in in Canada as well. So 
there are some good options out there for our Canadian friends, but really are really are, um, are you ready for the winners, Rob? Uh, well, let's step away for a quick yeah. break real quick. And then when we come back, we will set up our winners uh, for the Monaco Grand Prix. But because this is on YouTube for only the second time in the F1 Gambling Podcast history, we want to say thank you for watching. Uh, and of course, this is on the NASCAR Gambling Podcast feed. So if you're subscribed there and you saw it, uh, or if you just found this video, make sure to check out some of our NASCAR stuff. We've got well, over 50 some odd episodes. I mean, granted, the news may be a little bit old, but if you love watching things that you already know the answers to, that shows for you. But we do also have the Coke 600 up there for NASCAR. We've got the Xfinity race, Alsco Uniforms 300. Soon we'll have the truck race. Soon we'll have DFS. Uh, and then you can just follow along with us. And if you like this, if you like the F1 Gambling Podcast being offered on YouTube, let us know in the comments. Maybe we can make a separate channel. Maybe we just keep dropping into the NASCAR channel. That's the way you can support it. Like this video, comment, subscribe on, on YouTube, and click that bell and, uh, and let everybody know that the F1 Gambling Podcast should be on YouTube. Maybe we'll get the bosses to start their own channel, or our own channel, and we'll go from there. So um, thank you. This is the awkward part, if you've never watched it before, where I try to get out of this read without sounding like a complete tool, uh, and it's never worked. So, uh, yeah, love you. Bye. Hey, everybody. If you play fantasy football, especially in auction leagues. And or you're a whiskey fan. Yes, exactly. Check out the Sports Gambling Podcast fantasy football channel show, Old Fashioned Football. Coming to you every Tuesday morning. Give us a listen. We'll bring you the latest fantasy football data, including the injury report, studs and duds, waiver wire targets, and suggested fab, market movers. After all, we are the Marks. He is my hubby. And she's J Mark's wifey. And we're bringing all this to you while drinking an old-fashioned and giving you our honest review of a different whiskey every week. All that and more. Hop on over. Give us a listen. Come for the football. Stay for the whiskey. This ad's almost done. Going once. Going twice. Sold. All right. By the way, shout out to Rod if you are watching on YouTube. Sick graphics he put together for the F1 Gambling Podcast. I love this. This look is pretty amazing. It's great. Also, IndyCar, Indy 500, uh, episode is available on youtube as well i don't remember if you covered that one or not but i wanted to make sure it got a mention yeah no you always got to give love to indycar i know i know you love you some indycar i love me some indycar rod i'm glad we get to talk about it i wish we got to talk about it more but hey i'll take every excuse i can indy 500 week it's going to be a good good one for that so hey, love people it said they love i mean people said they love the indycar yeah. one so get, i mean get I'm some just... good feedback on that so uh might have to slip some more uh indycar stuff in there when we can Maybe we'll accidentally record a couple episodes and just go. toss it in there. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, let's crown some winners here, shall we? That uh, Max Verstappen is going to just run away with this, and we're good. Bye. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, so Max is he is plus money some places. So uh, I'm looking at Barstool right now. He's plus 100 over there. If you want a chance at Max at plus money, this is your chance. There's already some odds out for the Spanish Grand Prix next week. And he's like minus 200 again on that one already, despite being plus 100 this week. I do think that the fact that he is plus 100, and I think F1 Capper kind of touched on this last week, that kind of shows you that this is the track where maybe somebody else takes it. So I'm laying off Max. Not going to take that bait of him being plus money. I'm going with his teammate Checo, plus 350. I already laid it out for you a few minutes ago when I talked about the head-to-head -head and him beating Max. It's his turn in the order, right? Max, Checo, Max, Checo, Max. Time for Checo again to get it done. Um, but he's been very good on this track in the past. So you go back and you look. Second place here last year, like I talked about before. Second place in 2021. He was sixth here in 2019, and that's when he was uh, at Racing Point Force India. He was 10th with them in 2018, seventh with them in 2017. Uh, again, all those last couple of ones were with the Force India team. Still running very good here. He is just great on this type of circuit and at this circuit specifically. Um, and he's done a great job. Obviously, we've talked about what he's done this season. It's been absolutely amazing. Give me Checo, plus 350. I think he gets it done this week. Um, and I think that if he starts up front, especially, this could be a dominating race for Red Bull from Checo instead of from Max Verstappen. Also going to toss out there, Carlos Sainz, 30 to 1 over on DraftKings. Um, shop around a little bit, 20 to 1 in some places. DraftKings has him at 30 to 1. Really like that. Um, those were all Carlos Sainz 
stats that I just read off, not Checo signs. I just, not Checo stats. I just realized that. So let's back up and redo this. Okay. The Checo thing. Well, let's go into signs because I just read off all his stats. He was second here last year. That's what I was talking about. Carlos signs. Uh, second in 2021, sixth in 2019. And then all those Force India. Um, he's the one who raced for Force India. <laughs> Uh, all those stats for there, 10th in 2018, a 7th in 2017, um, and a 6th in 2019, all for Force India. So Carlos Sainz, and again, we you talked about it, right? A 4th place finish, a 6th place finish, a couple of 5th place finishes this week or this year. He's right there knocking on the door. If Checo and Red Bull doesn't get it done, I could see Carlos Sainz getting it done at 30-1. to 1. Back to Checo, like we had talked about a few minutes ago. Um he won this race last year. It was Science who finished second to him. That sounds a lot better. Um, and he was fourth place in 2021 in the race before that uh, in his times with Red Bull here. Um, again, second at Bahrain. He won a, at uh, Saudi. Then he had his horrible finish of fifth place at Australia. Won again at Azerbaijan. And second again last week or last race, rather, um, at the USGP. So I think that Checo gets it done. Um, that's why I took him at 350. But if he doesn't, Carlos Sainz, I already I laid out his case, right? I think that he could get it done at 30 to 1. I think there's really good value on that. And going into the week, we don't ever know which ones of these other guys. We know the Red Bulls are going to be fast, right? But then it's always a surprise every week. Like sometimes George Russell is the next fastest. Sometimes he's the 13th fastest. And you just don't know. So I think if you get Sainz now at 30 to 1 early, if he is one of the faster cars, then – you're going to get a deal because his odds are going to drop like crazy. And if he's a little bit slower, you still got him at 30 to one at least. So you've got that. You can adjust and, and bet on somebody else if you need to. But love, love, love Checo this week. Carlos signs a good insurance policy. And then I'm going to toss out one of my bonus bets here as well. This is how Eric Max in at plus money. Uh, Caesars has this listed under the F1 section um, as a special boost. It's Scott Dixon to win the IndyCar race, Max Verstappen to win the. F1 race at Monaco here, 19 to one. Absolutely in love with Scott Dixon this weekend. I really, really think he's going to win that race. He is one of my picks to win on his own. So go listen to the IndyCar uh, show for that. But if I'm already taking Dixon to win the Indy 500, well, there's pretty decent chance, despite the case I just made against him. Max is still going to win this race, right? He could lead every lap. He could do it. We know he can. He's won here before. Again, you hear it every week, but... So if Checo doesn't get it done for me and cash that, if Signs doesn't get it done and cash that, and we have to settle for another max win, then I'll at least know my parlay is alive. I can root even harder for Scott Dixon to win the Indy 500, and it ties the two races in nicely together, which I greatly enjoy. I think everybody <laughs> enjoys them, some uh, some parlays like that. And again, we have a good one that uh, that laid out in the, did I do it in the Indy or did I do it in the NASCAR? You did it in the Indy. That's Scott. And it was all three races. Uh, yeah. The winner top, from all three. No, no. It was the or top no, it wasn't three. even. Yeah, it was top. Yeah. Just good top finishes top in all three. Yeah. So uh, definitely go back and check that one out because I think that one has a good one to uh, to go. Um, I'm looking for the one. I, and I, I got it I here. If, if you want to read it quick, I can read it for you. What's that? Uh, your, your three teams. Oh, yeah. Do that. Do yeah. that. So it's uh, Perez. Podium finish. That's all he's got to do. Podium finish. I just made the case for him to win, for him to beat Max Verstappen. All he has to do is get a podium finish. Marcus Erickson, who won last year's Indy 500 um, to get a top five. And Denny Hamlin, who won last year's Coke 600 uh, to get a top five as well at plus 609 over on Caesar. So all of last year's winners for these three. But all they have to do is get a podium, top five, and a top five. Love. I agree. Okay, so I found this one on uh, Bet A No. So if you are, I'm going to throw a bonus one out there myself. Bet A No, B E T A N O. It's a book out there for you Canadian folks. Um, look on the Ontario part of it. I think it's mainly and maybe just Ontario, but check around. Uh, they've got any driver to win race, pole position, and fastest lap at plus four thirty. So I mean, if you think Max Verstappen is going to single-handedly do all of this stuff, uh, win the race get the pole and turn the fastest lap, which we've seen him do in his career uh, at plus 450 or plus 430. Rather, I, I think that's a fun little a fun little special to take uh, on bet. I know. All right. So for my winner, I'm going with Lewis Hamilton. It's not like a broken record on this guy, uh, but he's at 40 to one. 
And I feel like that might be a little bit of a misprice given the fact that, listen, in 15 starts, he has never, ever finished worse than 12th in this race. I mean, he has got seven podium finishes in 15 races. That is a pretty impressive streak and three wins on this track, two of which have come in 2016 and 2019. So he's, he's even won here within the last three years. Uh, he's, he's been able to get it done. Now this season for Mercedes has not been the greatest for them. And I say that, and yet he still doesn't have a finish worse than sixth on the season. Two sixth place finishes in uh, Baku and Miami to uh, to sort of round out the last couple of weeks. But before that, fifth, fifth, second. So he had a second place in Australia. Um, he's fast, damn it. He's still fast. Like he's still Lewis Hamilton. And on this track, there are tracks that certain guys get up for. Last couple of years have not been great for him. Seventh and eighth place finish in 2021 and 2022. Um, but in that, in that Monte Carlo race of 2019, he led all 78 laps, started on the pole, ended on the pole. So that's, that's a, that is what they call an old school ass whooping when you just completely dominate the race, uh, from start to finish. So uh, again, I mean, if Max doesn't get it done, which, or Checo doesn't get it done, I feel like this has got to be due for Lewis to, to find some sort of something. And if there's weather. I mean, that even throws a big factor into it because then now tires are an issue. Um, pit strategies are an issue. Undercutting, staying out long. Like, there's a lot that could be done for Lewis, and, and he's a smart driver. So I think um, if, if, the, if it starts to get a little dicey, I think he can lean on his veteran status and get it done this week. Yeah, I really like the balance of this, too. It, it gives you so many different options because you've got a way to have Max in there you have to have Dixon pull through. I get that. But at least you'll still be alive after this race if Max ends up winning. But if he doesn't, really love Checo. Then you have two long shot insurance policies. Two guys in the big seven of drivers, right? You add Alonzo in there now with the big six. You've got the seven guys. Likely a winner is not going to come outside of those seven guys. That would be the story of all stories if it did. But you got a couple insurance policies on long shots there. Maybe they figure something out. Maybe circumstances fall correctly. Lewis Hamilton knows how to win, I've heard. So it is it is a good option. Uh, I, I really like how this worked out with us between our vets, balancing out getting plenty of different options without having to to pay up too much or, or have bad prices on them. I agree. Uh, all right, well, get your pen and paper out. We are going to give you all of the bets from this uh, card for Monaco. Cody started you out with Lando Norris as a top six car at plus 600. And then threw in quite possibly a fast lap for Lando. Maybe put some soft tires on at the very end and tries to get out a point uh, at 125 to one. And then I said that Max Verstappen was going to finish better than Shaw Leclerc in FP1 at plus 100 over there on Bet MGM. And then Cody said that the over 16 and a half classified drivers was the way to go at the end of this race at minus 122 on Barstool. And then also, if you're going to take 16 and a half. You might as well take over 17. Uh, that's at plus 220 over there on Fox bets. I said that a Ferrari was going to win the qualifying and take the pole this week. Fingers crossed at plus 155 over there on Caesars. Cody followed that up with uh, Checo over Max at plus 195 over there on Barstool for the race. I said that Carlos Sainz was going to finish as a top five car uh, at plus 110 on Barstool. And then Cody gave you uh, Perez at plus 350 to win the race, signs at 30 to 1, and then threw in a uh, cool little bonus bet that we got Max Verstappen and Scott Dixon to both win their respective races. Of course, Monaco and the Indy 500 at 19 to 1. And I tossed in Lewis Hamilton at 40 to 1 as an insurance policy over there on Superbook. So, uh, and then of course, make sure if you want that fast lap on Bet I know if you're an Ontario listener. Uh, plus 430 fast lap pole position and to win the race that is there for you as well I, that's the only place i've ever seen that one right now so uh, i think that's a good deal i like it so uh all right all that's left to do now is set your dvrs for thursday because the the practice is going to happen you want to watch that for sure uh keep an eye if you watch f1 or if maybe you're just stumbling on this one like practice all that stuff is so tidy it's all it's so short. I mean, it's like an hour and 15 minutes out of your day. 
and 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 you'll be able to watch practices you'll be able to watch qualifying in about the same amount of time and the races are just over two hours it's never a, a large time investment it's so worth your while to sit down and watch these races they're so much fun and all the stuff that leads up to it uh, you learn so much watching practice you learn so much watching qualifying that by the time you get to the race you feel like you already know how it's going to play out yeah exactly and i think that f1 more so than than the other series with nascar and stuff you learn a lot more in the practice sessions here it can help your your bets and mold them as you continue to go into the weekend so it definitely is a great watch uh yeah for sure all right well then let's turn them loose to go set their cards for the weekend uh and as we do cody always always remind them where they can find you on social media yep follow me on twitter at husker underscore zeeb um you can find all my work over there we've talked about all the hundreds of shows we already have out this week we got more coming out subscribe to the nascar gambling podcast the f1 gambling podcast uh you catch all of it over there i will be on uh dale center for the garage guys as well making uh f1 picks over there so might hear some repeats of these might hear some other ones too you'll have to tune in and find out um so yeah and again just uh thanks thanks everybody for watching thanks everybody for listening let's uh let's go cash some tickets make some money Let's cash some tickets, make some money. Follow me on Twitter at RJ Villagomez. Link in the bio to everything I got going on, whether it's here, whether it's in between media, the back road I'll be on on Thursday, so or it's probably already out by the time you listen to this. Who knows? I don't know when you listen. I don't care when you listen. I'm just glad that you do. Uh, so follow me there. And then, of course, check out my article coming out soon for for frequency's sake. I'm going to have all three. I think we're just going to pick a couple of winners from each and, and go from there. So uh, keep an eye open. Again, thanks for watching this, man. This is a blast. We love F1. We love uh, putting this on YouTube, and we hope that you enjoyed it as well. Leave a comment if you do. Like, subscribe, all that other good stuff. So we'll see you back uh, for our normal feed in NASCAR. We'll lay down some trucks. We'll lay down some DFS and have some fun with it. So till then, let's go racing and let it ride.